so this is another project of mine and I'm trying to fix a um, weed whacker uh, the brand is a uh, eager beaver but basically it's by McCulloch and you know in the I didn't mention this I didn't do a video on this but uh, it wouldn't run uh, my dad bought this and he he had he ran it for a few months and I'm not sure what he did wrong um, he couldn't get it running after a few months. Maybe the fuel mixture wasn't mixed correctly or something. But you know, he had it going for a while. But I don't know why. Um, afterward, it didn't work. But uh, he gave up on it and he put it in the shed for uh, I guess close to a decade now. I think, and uh, it wouldn't start anymore. So you know, I was cleaning out um, the shed and I figured you know I'll see if I can get this to work. Uh, even though we already have a uh, electric one now, so this is um, the Eager Beaver 282. But I think most small engine in the Wheat Whacker works the same thing. So um, I got it to work. Uh, I'm not quite sure what I really did, but I guess I got it to work. The thing it, uh, it wasn't getting any sparks, so I um, I took the whole machine apart and um, and adjusted the um, the coil and uh, it finally fired up but I, you know it was so difficult to tune so I think it may need a carb rebuild I, t I actually took it off and clean it uh, it was dirty I took it out and clean it and I, I got it finally got it running but I think it's uh, it's kind of different difficult to tune and I think it might be the diaphragm because when I took it out it was kind of warped and it might be a little rigid so I figured I'm going to rebuild this anyway so I'm going to show you how to take this one apart and you know most um, weed whackers um, the screws in the, are there in a different location but you know they all work the same thing so um, to remove this particular one well first thing I'd like to mention is you should remove the spark plug and then empty out any gas. So I'm gonna empty this out. So, well, let me pause the video here and uh, empty it out, and then I'll be back. Yeah, I already emptied the tank, but I think you still have some uh, running along the line. So what you do is you pump it. Make sure you really empty it out. Uh, you don't want any spills or anything. Make sure you work in the ventilated area also. Thing that looks clean enough and let me empty the rest that you know came back from the carb okay for this machine you remove the the filter the air filter uh, I think this one works with the screwdriver let me step on this yeah every machine is uh, different but essentially they they're pretty much the same. So this one is very simple to remove. Here's their foam filter. And what you do is you remove these two screws. And as you can see this is the choke. Um, let me get back with the socket to remove this. And now with the screws off, you just lift the filter off. Now that's the fuel line running to the primary bulb there. So there is the your carburetor. And for this one, it's very simple. Uh, okay, to remove the carburetor, I guess just remove the fuel lines. And this one just lifts, it just lifts right out. And then of course it's attached to the throttle cable, so you want to remove that. Okay, 
Yeah, I guess let me put the camera down and remove this. Uh, it just just goes through there. I mean, it's fairly simple, so can't do it with one hand. Okay, so I finally got it out, and I just want to explain a few things. Um, I guess what you could do is uh, here's the there's the throttle. If you move the throttle, you can see it open. Uh, it should be fairly clean now because I took it out to clean the first time. But I think what went bad was the um, the diaphragm. I will show you this, but I think after being soaked in a few days, I think it might have gotten better. But um, uh, I think it still needs to be replaced because it's so hard to tune. You remove these four screws and it should come right off. Uh, if um, your machine is working well, you want to be careful. You don't want to damage it. Uh, it might still be good. So let me remove that and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay guys, so I finally have it removed. So this is the diaphragm here. Uh, as you can see, it's bubbled up a little bit. I'm not sure if that affects it. It was a little worse when I took it out the first time and it was kind of rigid. And I guess maybe after soaking in it a few days, it softened up a little bit so it's better. So I think what really fixed it really um, might have been this. Um, but I had a hard time tuning it. So um, I'm going to rebuild it anyway to see what's going on because this is over a decade old, I believe. So, um, yeah, you know, a thing I'd like to mention, a good idea when you're taking things apart, even though you're familiar with engines and carburetors and all that stuff, um, you might want to make a video of it because, you know, if in case you forgot how it goes uh, or what position it is, um, you can always uh, go back to the video and see how it works. So this is how um, this is how uh, this is where the diaphragm is. So it was actually bubbling the other way. Uh, you know, right now it's going back in, and it's a little bit softer now. But I'm probably gonna rebuild it. Um, it's cheap anyway. Uh, I think some of them are going for ten dollars, and I even seen some for five dollar. But it could be um, you might be getting what you you paid for. Um, but I'm gonna try it out and see whatever I can save anyway. Um, this machine's been old and they're not that uh, expensive anymore. You could probably pick up a uh, used one for fairly cheap. Um, I'm only fixing this up. Uh, I have an electrical one now, but I'm only fixing this up because I'm, um, you know, I can't stand having stuff that didn't work after you purchased it for a while or even stuff that you leave around for a long time. It's a learning experience, so, you know, it's something I do for fun anyway. So here's the back of the diaphragm. Yeah, so make a video and make note of um, how things go apart, and plus you get to recognize the screw too. Sometimes the screws are fairly simple. So, um, yeah, um, while I'm at it, I probably want to show you uh, this is what they called a diaphragm carburetor. Uh, there's some that is called uh, float bowl um, or what they call a float carburetor and it uses a float. Uh, I wish I could take off my tiller and show you that but it was a pain in the neck on, on that particular one because I guess it's um, worn so I had to adjust it right for the fuel to go through. So this basically they all work the same. So here's the pin that stops it from um, overflowing and all that stuff. You could probably un unscrew this screw here, take it off and clean it. So if you want to clean the carb, yeah, I guess you could spray clean it, but you want to be even cleaner, you remove all this stuff and you know clean it with the carb cleaner or whatever. So um, I'm going to order, uh, hopefully I can find it. Um, uh, there, this is the reason why I took it apart, so I can see what type of carb it is, so I can order it. Hopefully there's some numbers in here. I'm pretty sure it's a Walbro. Yeah, it's a Wal Walbro carb. Yeah, I didn't know what carb did this, and I couldn't find it by the um, by the Wheat Whackers model number and brand. Uh, I guess they they're the McCall and the McCalla, and they probably use different carbs too. So to get the exact one, it's better if I take it off and you know know what brand and you know look around the block to see. Yeah, with this camera in my way, I can't see. I guess uh, it's not focused. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, I guess uh, you look at that number. Uh, and maybe right here. 
or maybe any other number that you can see around it might give you a clue how to find the rebuild kit so uh, hopefully I get on order and it'll be here soon I'll probably show you how to assemble it uh, you remove this screw you probably you can see the rest of the carb and I guess remove it carefully and then you can um, clean everything out it was a lot more dirtier than this I, I cleaned it out but I'm probably gonna try to clean it one more time before I put in all the new gasket and diaphragm so yeah I'll see you in the next video yeah I know you guys probably noticed my slippers broken I that's probably gonna be my next video how to repair these broken slippers okay see you guys in the next video